Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Yes, I'm still alive. I know it's been a while since I put a video up, but I just have been preoccupied with work and haven't been able to put a video up in over two weeks. But I've certainly have been working in the background. If you follow my channel, you know I was working on the JAT Easy Amp and I had a problem with those monolithic output transistor, the monolithic Darlington output transistors. You know, they were blowing up during a test. Now my 501 amp, I didn't have any problems with the output stage blowing up during the tests. So I grafted the output stage of that amp onto the Easy amp. I really like the transistors I used. And you now I'm going to use these whenever I get the boards made for the uh, 501 amp. And yes, you know, I commended to do that. I'm going to, you know, I said I'm going to do it. So I'm going to have boards made and make them available. You know, it's just, the thing with me is time. If I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. But it's just time and dealing with work. So it'll eventually happen. But at any rate, these transistors are nice, but they're expensive to play around with on a prototype board. They're like $3 or something like that. Whereas this transistor, they're the exact same die inside. It's just that these are cheaper. Well, the problem is, I wanted to use the cheaper transistor on my uh, Easy Amp. Because it's a lower power amp, it doesn't dis dissipate as much heat. Of course, this package is rated to dissipate a lot more heat than this package. The smaller package, you can see the uh, thermal pad area is much larger. Well, the thing is, you know, like I said, I want to use the TO220 version on the easy amp because it's a lot cheaper so what do they do you know every time I find a nice component I like sooner or later they're going to discontinue it and that's what happened with the FJP 5200 they went and discontinued it so now I want to find another cheap transistor that I can use with the easy amp I might look at the MJE 3055 and it's uh, 2955 complement. Yeah, I'm not real fond of those transistors. Yeah, but they might work. But I still want to find a better transistor that's cheap. You know, it's under a dollar. I'm going to keep the price down on the Easy Amp project. You can see here there's the uh, TO264 package, 2SC5200, which is this one here even comes in a TO3P type package and looks like they give a different number for it 5242 so in today's video I just want to see a comparison between those monolithic Darlingtons and the uh, output circuit I'm using in the 501 amp which I'm going to use in this circuit the uh, easy amp so it's a pretty basic circuit power supply comes in goes through the uh, 4 ohm non-inductive load here and the scope connects to the collector of course there's the Donington configuration using discrete transistors and I'm going to put a 10 kilohertz square wave signal in using this um, microcontroller able to get nice fast rising and falling edges for testing with this at about 200 volts per microsecond it's the fastest thing I can come up with here on my bench and this circuit here is just showing the monolithic Darlington transistor the dotted line is just the transistor casing and this is all the components inside that it's kinda like a simple integrated circuit Okay, I have you pointed at the scope here, so we'll get a waveform going here. Turn on the microcontroller. Okay, so we'll do a comparison of, like I say, the 
monolithic Darlington versus the discrete components. But I also want to compare the two Darlingtons I was using, the BDW42 and the BDX33. And as far as the discrete components, I'll look at the, uh, the BD139 driving the FJP5200 and then a BD139 driving the MJE3055. Just you want to see how those compare. Okay, so now we have the BDW. Okay, so as I adjust the signal here, right there, it's saturation. And it saturates, there's a little bit of ringing going on on the bottom here. But again, this is a 10 kilohertz signal. And you can see that it's not particularly fast. This microcontroller does source and sync, so it can remove charge from the base to you know, help speed up the, the circuit, but we're still seeing you know, pretty slow slew rate going on there. Now that's one microsecond, one volt, one microsecond. So it's not a straight line, it's curving, but you know, somewhere at one volt per microsecond. So it's not really fast at all. Maybe a little faster on the falling edge. So I'll pause the camera here and pop in the other transistor and see what it looks like. Okay, so now I have the BDX33 connected. Yeah, it looks pretty much the same, really. Eh, might be a little faster. I think it's a 10 amp transistor versus the uh, BDW42, which is a uh, 15 amp transistor. Collector current maximums there. Okay, so I'll set up the discrete output stage with the BD-139 and FJP-5200 and see what those look like. Okay, so I have the discrete output stage set up now, and we'll take a look at that. This is the actual circuit on the socket board here with the driver and the output. I'm sure all these long lead lengths are part of the reason I'm getting that ringing. But, you know, there's not much I can do about that. I don't want to solder this up make it real nice and neat. So I went from the monolithic Darlington to this circuit. Now at this point I do not have this resistor right here connected. This resistor helps to drain off charge in the output transistor when this reduces its current to the base there will be some charge carriers and you want to get rid of those with the speed up resistor and I'm not putting it in yet. I just want to see how it behaves without that. Okay, let's power it up. Already it looks like it's faster. You can see the uh, edges are straight. I don't even have the speed up resistor in yet. Let's turn that down, see what it looks like. So we'll go up to a volt per division in one microsecond. You can see in this area it's a lot faster. Now I'm curious if I add the speed up resistor what will happen. Okay let me connect the base to emitter resistor which speeds up the circuit. The idea anyway. Well, if I can get this plugged in here can see it peeking up a little bit. Let's uh, crank this up. Yeah, it does help a little bit. It might show a different result if I take it out of saturation though. Let's turn that down. Turn this down to something below saturation see what happens now it does you can see it loses amplitude see how that shrinks because that transistor takes away some of the current which would drive the output 
so that's normal. Yeah, it does peak it up a little bit, speeding it up ever so slightly. Okay, I'll plug that in. Well, it is performing a lot better than those Darlingtons. Those monolithic Darlingtons are a lot slower. Even though those Darlingtons have built-in speed-up resistors here. Okay, so I replaced the FJP5200 with the MJE3055. See what those look like. And, yeah, they're... Uh, there's a slope to that line. It's just they're just not that fast of transistor. I wonder how the speed up capac or the speed up resistor helps. Oh yeah, big time. That's a turn off right there. See how that really helps? See, this is the transistor turning off because when it's on, it's pulling the collector down towards ground. And when that transistor goes off, it's coming up to the supply rail. And you can see that curve. It's, when I add the 220 ohm resistor, it sharpens up that curve. It's helping that transistor to turn off by getting rid of those charge carriers in the base. You know, yeah, it's cheap, but I don't like that transistor. I don't like those 3055s. They're just, they're just not going to work good enough. But on the other hand, they might be a little faster than those Darlington Steel. So, you know, they might be okay. Again, this is a cheap amplifier. As long as I get the performance, if I can get the power output and distortion performance I want, you know, it might be worth trying these transistors. But compared to the... FJP5200, those are meant to be audio transistors. They're very good. That's why they just kick the crap out of these other transistors. I'll have to stop claiming that the videos for the project will be only a certain amount because you never know when you run into these problems. Right, Snickers? It's Snickers' 14th birthday. Glad you're still around, Snick. <laughs> I think he wants to sleep now, so... I guess I'll let him be. Well, poking around a little bit on DigiKey, I found these transistors. They're available. They're cheap. They're TO220 case. 15 amps. More than enough. 80 volts. 83 watts. They are switching transistors, though. Well, they're meant for switching. Doesn't mean you have to use them that way. 50 megahertz. FT, pretty low capacitance, everything that will work in our favor here. Nice flat gain characteristics. You know, a lot of transistors will go up like this and fall down, but these have a nice flat characteristics. Safe operating area. Nothing to write home about. I mean, they are TO220 case transistors with limited dissipation, it's lower voltage. They're not like the 5200 that they're rated, I forget, like 250 volts, 15 amps. But again, our, our amplifier is not using these at their maximum capability. Should be okay. I'm not sure what's going on here. The DC line is at 10 amps. And that's more than enough for what we need, but... Uh, collector current continuous, 15 amps DC. Peak, 20 amps. So I'm not sure what's going on with that safe operating area line. Some of these data sheets, you know, you just, sometimes you have to read between the lines. Yeah, I might try these. These might 
work pretty nicely for an uh, audio amplifier. Another problem with those MJE 3055s is uh, their maximum voltage is 60 volts. So we're working pretty close to their maximum. Where these give me some headroom. So I might buy these and try them out, but I still want to play around with those MJE 3055s and the complement 2955. Heck, they might do the job. They might meet the distortion and the uh, other parameters I need for that project. I guess this is enough for this video. I'll wrap it up here. Pretty much found out that these Darlingtons are pretty slow and they blow up too easy under test. That doesn't give me a lot of confidence in them. Going back to a discrete type Darlington stage is much better. Just have to grab the right transistors at a reasonable price to keep the cost of the project down. Another problem with these Darlingtons I don't think I mentioned is they require more current in the previous stage, the voltage amplification stage, because these have a lot less gain than a discrete Darlington circuit would. In fact, I have to run the voltage amplification stage in the easy amp at double the current I am with my 501 amplifier. So, you know, they require a lot of gain. And even doing so, when I do the 2 ohm test, my output voltage swing starts to collapse because of the load. So, yeah, these transistors just don't cut it. And, well, it's a learning thing. I've learned, even though that they could work in an amplifier, they have been used in commercial or uh, consumer products before, uh, they're not good enough for me. So, they're out. And that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.